Okay, so moving on to 2014, where the engine's taking shape, and by that I mean the engine's being rebuilt step by step. Now the first parts I'm going to be covering are the pistons, be reassembling them and then fitting them to the liners. And once everything's done, placing all liners back onto the engine, and locking the connecting rods onto the crank, sealing off the engine, placing the rest of the parts that needs to be assembled onto it, and when everything's done, cylinder heads are put back into place, and finally timing the engine. Now the engine has been rebuilt by the help of a friend of mine, so I had to journey all the way to Sicily to get it done, and by that the engine has been rebuilt at a much faster rate. Now throughout the videos you will see many different aspects of the engine while it's being rebuilt. I will explain certain key features as I go along, but the build is pretty much straightforward. So that's pretty much it as regards to an introduction. Now I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video as I will be explaining myself as I go along with each part being rebuilt. So let's begin. Okay, so in this video we are going to be focusing on the rebuild of the engine. Now we are going to start off with the rebuild of the pistons and following that placing them back into the liners. After everything is properly set, each unit is placed back in their respective order inside the engine. I'm going to start off by placing the snap ring back into the piston head. Now you want to make sure that the ring is sitting properly in the groove and aligned accordingly as recommended by the manufacturer because these things tend to vary from one piston to another, even from the same brand. Now when placing this snap ring you have to be very very patient and very cautious of what you're doing so you can do it delicately. The rebuild process of this engine was done with the help of a friend of mine, Antonio. He specializes in these sort of cars, especially the Maserati by Turbo and other cars of that period. So for any people who are interested in contacting him, his details are listed in the description below. Okay, so let's start from the very beginning. Now we have as the piston head with the matching connecting rod and they need to be linked by placing the respective gadging pin or wrist pin to make up the piston as a unit again. And remember the markings done previously have to face the same direction as directed in the previous video. Now the gadging pin is sealed by placing a snap ring on each side of the piston head and it is imperative that this job is done very patiently and properly in order to ensure that no mistakes are made so the engine would be rebuilt properly and would last for years. Now when placing the piston rings, we are going to start off from the bottom and work ourselves upwards. Now there are various methods on how to apply the piston rings, but I'm going to work myself from bottom to top. The first ring to be placed is the oil scraper ring, or sometimes called the oil control ring. This ring controls the oil that is splashed onto the cylinder walls and scrapes the oil back down to the crankcase. It is divided into three pieces. The middle part is the expander, which is followed by the upper rail and the lower rail in order to keep a tight seal. Now the next ring is the second ring or, or sometimes called the intermediate ring. This ring has a dual function where it assists the first ring in sealing the heat transfer and it also aids the scraper ring by cleaning whatever oil is left behind from the oil ring. And finally, the first ring is the top compression ring where this ring is found on the top groove of the piston head and its purpose is to seal the combustion gases and prevents them from passing all the way down to the crankcase. Naturally each ring comes with a gap, so if all rings have the gaps aligned on top of each other, then the combustion gases can easily pass down onto the crankcase due to these small gaps and creating what is called blow-by. So when all the rings are installed 
The next and most important procedure before installing the piston inside the liner is to stagger each ring from one another. Now staggering the rings means that the gap each ring has should not match any other ring's position. In this case I've set each ring's gap 120 degrees apart from one another. When all is set the next thing to do is to use the ring compressing tool, tighten the rings and place it on the liner. When everything is set, gently tap the piston head with a soft material such as a wooden part of a mallet and make sure to feel the piston that it's going down very smoothly. So if the piston tends to lock and doesn't seem to want to move, that means one of the rings is getting stuck and it's important to stop pushing down the piston otherwise you can easily crack one of the rings. Here we can see one of the new liners. This is the replacement of the one shown in the previous video where it was cracked. This one was a very rare part to find since the majority of biturbos are 2 liter and 2.5 liter and the 2.8 liter was the engine which wasn't that common to find so this one had to be specially made for this car in particular. In this part the engine studs are to be placed in their proper order because the ones facing the outer side are slightly longer than the one on the inside so one by one they are tightened in place. Now before the pistons are reinserted in the order of how they were taken out, a seal must be placed properly onto the sleeve and it must be made sure that the seal is not crimped or badly placed. On top of that, to ensure a proper seal, the o-ring is smeared with some sealing glue for a permanent seal to ensure that the engine is watertight and also oil will not escape from the crankcase. One by one each piston was gently tapped into position and aligned from one another. So when all pistons are in place, the sleeves are locked with a special tool so as to not fall over when the engine is rotated upside down. And when the engine is upside down, the connecting rods are inspected and properly placed next to one another so that the bottom cap of the connecting rod is marked and taken out to prepare for when placing the crankshaft into place. Now since this engine splits in half, the next thing to do is to prepare the facing of the block in order to mate it to the other end. So everything must be properly cleaned and when prepared the engine is sealed and bolted back together. So that will be continued in the next video so stay tuned and thanks for watching.